going on everybody welcome back we're here it's a little bit between christmas and new year's and we're gonna get started on that video i talked about which is doing the radiator and oil cooler ducting that's gonna start here and work its way back to my oil cooler and radiator so i should definitely preference this with i am flying by the seat of my pants i have no idea if this is gonna work but i sure hope it does now that i've at least gotten that disclaimer out of the way let's get on with it so the reason I have to create my own radiator ducting is because we added the tunnels. Before I put the tunnel floors on, it was just a flat floor. That allowed me to just run my oil cooler and radiator in a vertical orientation, just right about here. And that just created this entire side pod was basically, you know, just a high pressure area of air being pushed through my oil cooler and radiator. Now that we've got the tunnel, it's raised the floor up a little bit and totally shrunk that area down. So that means I've got to come up with a different way to package my radiator and my oil cooler. So to get this party started, I should probably start with another disclaimer. That being, I'm making this a bit more complicated than it has to be. Mainly because I'm hoping to mount the radiator and the oil cooler to the top of my car rather than just bolting it down on top of my tunnels. That way, if I have a problem with the tunnels or the side pods, I should be able to still remove the tunnels or the side pods without having to mess with my oil cooler or my radiator. Now, what I'm trying to do is use the flange that the floor bolts to as the mounting surface for these trays that are gonna hold up my oil cooler and my radiator. And even though they're gonna do a great job and we're making this out of stiff enough aluminum, there's still a chance that I'm gonna need to support the outer edge. However, we've got a couple of things in play that are hopefully gonna allow me to make sure this is a more of a static solution instead of actually having to drill holes and bolt them through my new carbon tunnel floor. So now that we've got a platform, both one for the left and obviously one for the right, we basically have a samesies samesies starting position on the left and the right hand side of the car. So now we can start working on making the duct work that's gonna feed my radiator and my oil cooler. So we might as well jump into making something out of carbon fiber and here it is. This is gonna be the lower portion of the duct for my radiators and oil coolers. We're embellishing off of the design on my buddy John's car, even though we're not gonna copy it exactly. We'll show you a little bit more about that here in a second. But this simple plywood covered with vinyl mold is gonna give us the base for which we can put our radiators and oil coolers above. Now, as you can see, we've got vinyl over the plywood to help smooth it out. We're applying mold release, even though we're not sure we have to. And now we're moving on to putting some pretty thick carbon fiber mat down and over this plywood part. Now we're gonna be using our peel ply and the vacuum bagging mat. So everything is just like you saw in our fourth episode where we did the flat panels for my craft structure got our resin we've got to mix up and then from there we're just going to start wetting down our carbon fiber pieces. Just as a reminder we did apply a mold release just because it's cheap insurance. I think you can get away with just having the vinyl as a separation barrier but again the mold release is what we'll call cheap insurance. Now we also had some inserts we decided to put on the sides of this box so that we could reinforce it and we're just doing two really thick layers of carbon fiber. Now we'll get the peel ply put down and get the vacuum bagging material, bag it up, seal the end, and start vacuuming it down. And just so everybody knows, this is an example of what John's radiator duct looks like. So radiator oil cooler goes up here, this flange right here, this little bottom surface, this would just sit on the top of his tunnel floors. And this opening right here is where the air would come in. Now that works with his specific side pod. It doesn't work with my car. So we use this as a roadmap, but we're not really, let's say, gonna copy it. Now, we embellished where we could. We definitely have copied the angle so this is the same upward angle as John's. And if I'm not too stubborn, there it is. 
we basically had to make ours two pieces. So we have a tray for my radiator or oil cooler, and then we have the duct for my radiator or oil cooler. And eventually, when we're ready, we are just gonna find a way to bond these lovely two parts together. For now though, I'm going to at least just start setting this in the car and figuring out how I can feed the duct or feed the air into this or possibly make this all one part. So as you can see, my aluminum isn't gonna sit right on top of the floor. It's actually gonna have a little bit of a shim that holds and supports that outer edge. We might even do a little bit of a stake cable, but at least for now, it's flat across the floor. Now I've gotta obviously at least get two mounting holes in here and they're gonna be the same mounting holes left and right. From there, I'm going to get to the point where I can drill through this aluminum plate, bolt down the carbon fiber piece to the aluminum plate, and from there, well, we get to really start the dirty work. So this is hopefully where it gets interesting. I'm gonna to try to create a cavity that we can then fill with a garbage bag, basically. Fill it with expanding foam so we might have a plug we could copy with carbon fiber. Yeah. So, this is the moment where I truly will say, I don't know what I'm doing. However, at least I know enough to know that I'm trying to get the shape I desperately need for the ducting to feed the radiator and the oil cooler. Now I know some of you are looking at it like, hey, why don't you just put a block off plate, make everything go through the radiator or the oil cooler, and that would work, but for whatever reason, stores have the ability to bleed a lot of high pressure air out of the side pod. So rather than trying to seal up holes or running into a problem down the road, I just decided that the right way to do it is to run a intake duct all the way to the front air inlet. Now, like I said, I don't know what I'm doing and I hope I can make this work, but realistically, this is the most insured way that I'm not gonna have a problem with any kind of overheating when I'm running around the country. Out here in California, I'm sure I don't really need this. We run in really temperate climates, but if I'm running at high altitudes or if I'm running in high heat, high humidity, I just wanna make sure that I'm not chasing an overheating or a cooling issue that I just get to enjoy racing my car. So, the game plan is, we have at least a cavity that we're hoping to fill. We have kind of boarded it off to the best of our ability, so it's gonna just be a, you know, direct shot. Now, we need to take a screenshot or picture of what the inside of that cavity looks like. And to do that, we are going to use expanding foam. This is risky, I don't like doing it, but I gotta do it. And so what we'll do is, we've obviously got a bag in there that will hold the expanding foam. I've got an additional bag out here in case it decides it wants to go out the front. So for those that haven't worked with any kind of expanding foam previously, this can get messy. Moreover, it gets really hot and it gets really sticky. So if it leaves the bag, you need to make sure that it is somewhere to go that isn't going to be something you need to sand off later. That's why I use this secondary bag as an ability for it to puke out and into. That way I made sure that no matter what, I didn't have to have foam get stuck to a part of my car. Now, Beyond that, you can see how much energy it really has expanding here. I tried to hold it down and yet that still wasn't gonna hold it back. Now we gotta get started in the trimming phase because unfortunately, even with my crude shaping to lay a foundation for the part to sit in, there's still gonna be trimming and sanding required. Now, I will say I made a massive blunder with this and made an absolute mess. If you're ever gonna do something like this, move the car outside, and more importantly, try to pull everything off the car that you can. I still had some electrical components, I still had my engine. The amount of cleaning I had to do to all of those pieces because I was cutting and sanding, boy, I just shot myself in the foot. Even though I did do some backpedaling when it came to how messy I made the car, 
both of the actual frameworks, or let's just call them molds, really turned out beautifully. They can get in and out of the side pods really well, and they run all the way up to the leading edge of the side pod, and that's gonna allow me to get high pressure air fed to my radiators. So you're gonna notice that I've gotta do some shaping here to make sure that they slide in and out of the opening because I've got that lip, but this is working out really well to try to get a firm shape as to what's going on. So after cutting and sanding, we ended up with this, which is the blank for one of the ducts for my store WF1. We are only gonna be starting off with this. We've gotta go back and we've gotta to try to formulate a better way of making parts out of this. So we're gonna probably go to a cardboard template, to a plywood template. And once we have a plywood template that we think will work, we'll go ahead and we'll make some carbon fiber parts. But that's what we're gonna be tackling down the road. For now, we got a lot done with getting the actual system into the car. We also got the soft lines for the braking system. We got to mock that all in and make sure that we have everything we need. We also got some captive nuts. We were able to pop rivet to the frame in a few places to make it easier to service the engine pan and the front diffuser. We also had the engine in and out, so we were able to finalize that final zip tie clamp on the top of the frame for either the brake or the clutch line. Thank you all for tuning in. I wish you all have a happy new year. We look forward to seeing you on the racetrack here in 2025. For now, I hope you all have a great rest of your evening and thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing. My hair's probably trash, but that's okay.